We are on our way to Corishan State Park in Florida. Are we saying that right? Corishan? Corishan. It can't be nearly as bad as the way we butchered Wakiwa. Wow, yeah. Sorry, Wakiwa. We were like Wakiwa, Wakiwika, Wakawa. Wakawa. Yeah, and it's actually Wakiwa, right? Yeah. Somewhere we are like offending Corishan. Good morning. Good morning. We are taking a walk on a rainy, gloomy day. But it's okay. Here in Corshan State Park. Because I've got quick dry pants. <laughs> and that's why I put them on. So we got in late last night. I mean, not too late. I guess it was about, what, 5.30, almost 6 o'clock? Well, no, it was like 6.30. But 6.30 when you are out away from streetlights is different than 6.30 when you are at home and you have tons of streetlights. From what we can see so far here, it's a very nice campground. I like the way, like the spaces are the normal distance apart. Like you're not like on top of your neighbor, but you're not like a long way away. It's, it's kind of normal. I mean, it's not like going in an RV park where like you could reach out and touch somebody. But I have to say, it's probably one of the closest ones we've stayed out so far. Right. But there is a lot of foliage between us Which and our neighbors. Which is really nice. Because I know that, like, when we've been to, like, Jonathan Dickinson State Park, one of them, we were very close to the neighbor. One of the campsites, you were far away. Right. But there was no foliage. Nothing so you can between. see everything. And what we're looking for is privacy. Yeah. So I don't care if I'm on top of my neighbor so long as, like, I don't have to look at them. And they don't have to look at us. Nobody wants to look at us. No one wants to watch Joe, like, in his boxer shorts making bacon on the Blackstone, right? At what? One o'clock in the morning? That's when we finally ate. Yeah, we ate at, like, one o'clock in the morning. Rachel's like, I'm hungry. I'm like... Me too. And so, yeah, we made sausages and eggs on the Blackstone at 1 a.m. It's starting to rain. It's okay. But that's okay. Quick dry pants. Quick dry pants. And I'm wearing basketball shorts. So, we set everything up. We have some foliage. But at one thing, I'm liking what I see so far. One thing I am going to say is definitely look on Google Earth at your campsite especially if you have a bigger rig, because we don't have a big, big rig. Eleanor just fits. She just fit. well. With the truck. Because you gotta park the truck. The length is good, you have plenty of length. You can always pull out the truck and like, you know, pull it across. I mean, so we have enough length. We can basically stay connected. Yeah. And we have that much length. But not much but, more. But width wise, we want to be able to open our awning. One of the things that we love about Eleanor is the fact that she's got a 21 foot long awning, like almost the entire length so of the trailer. So it makes a giant patio area. Especially here in Florida with the rain and everything like that. Well, between her slide on the one side and the awning on the other, that's how much room we have. Like, and that's it. I don't have another inch. I mean, we're just touching a tree on the one side and on the slide, on the other side where the slide is, I can pretty much the width of my body between me and a tree. Yeah. Some of these sites, there's a lot of like brush over it. Like they're not trimmed back a lot. And so, you can't bring like your chainsaw with you and cut a tree down. You're not allowed to do any of that kind of stuff in a state park in Florida. Like you're not even supposed to be taking a pine cone home. Just to give you an example of some of the sites. Now this is a site that was actually available for us. This is a shorter site. Probably would have been a little bit better for Eleanor. But look at But it. it's a little bit wider than ours. Yeah. But it's not as deep. So it kind of feels like you have to make a decision coming here. Do you want wide or do you want deep? And like this, we're deep, but not wide. This is actually um, a paved one too, because this is a, a, a wheelchair accessible one. This is probably leading us to the restroom Yeah, facility. let's take a look at the restroom. This is not the walk that I want to make at one o'clock in the morning when it's dark outside and there's nothing but me and the frogs hanging out. This is a family, family restroom. restroom. So we can, we can go in here together. Ooh, we can go in here together. Okay, so I don't know. What do you think? 
I think that this is not as nice as the Wakiwa Springs one or the Kelly Springs one. But it's and not as bad as John Prince. No, John Prince was way worse. But I mean, it's clean enough. We need to come up with a rating system for bathrooms. Like five finger dirty, four finger dirty. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's come up with a rate. Let us know down in the comment system. What would be like, you know how you can do like- Ew. Man. Well, you have to. You have to look at like Yay. Matt. Matt has the potty test. Bing. Right. 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 So let's come up with like a uh, on a scale of one to ten cleanliness to dirtiness. I like, gotta say, like a six toilet. You want to? We'll put like six toilets across six the bottom. Six toilets. What would you give this one? Scale of one to ten. I'm gonna go about a six to seven. Honestly, I'm gonna give it a seven to eight because it's clean. It's just old. Well, this is the family. Let's go take a look at one of the other ones. Okay. Okay, so when All was that? Clear. No dogs allowed in the bathrooms. So yeah, look at okay, this. Okay, this has got, this is, okay. This is just like an antique experience. So I'm gonna say that now looking at this, yeah, I'm gonna bump up to an eight because, I mean, pink it's peeling, old. but it's old. It's old, but it's clean. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say this one's a little bit better. The, this is cleaner than the family restaurant. This is grandma's house. Let's go take a look at the rest of them. Let's look at the potties. Grandma's house is older. A little bit of paint. But it's clean. Go look. a long way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get, oh, I like the little drainage in the bottom. Yeah. Probably where the old outhouse used to be. <laughs> so it says the bathhouses are closed between 1130 and 1 for daily cleaning. But this, so we're not even here when it's been cleaned yet. Now, as we're walking, the one thing I'm going to say about this park compared to the other two state parks that we've been to so far, this is the quietest. Very quiet. It is very quiet. I mean, we've seen a couple people, but it's very quiet. And again, I think it's like all the trees and every campsite, again, is divided by a bunch of foliage where even at Wikiwa, you saw like your neighbors in most of the sites. Yeah. So it is very quiet here. Now, granted, we are here on a Monday, yeah. which is how we're choosing to camp, like Sundays, Sunday afternoons through Wednesday. I think we're going to go this way to get to our campground. I know that it is crazy to say this, but we could not get out of our mind that a weekend could be in the middle of the week. Right. It doesn't have to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If it's easier for you to take off work on a Monday, Tuesday, you'll be happier in the campsite setting because it's not nearly as busy. Right. Okay. So this is campsite number seven number seven so now again nice like and open you said i said you have to sacrifice something you have paved here you have a nice new picnic bench there's not a lot over the top of you you're not super wide but you are a little bit deeper but then there's not a lot of foliage between you and your neighbor right so you have to sacrifice something so again, this is the little pathway that we'd be taking in the middle of the night because we're on the opposite side. We're on the outer loop. Man, I would be running during the evening because I will hold it for as long as I possibly can before I would have to go down this path. So that's not super bad, but again, you're thinking like, you know, midnight, you have to run to the restroom. Definitely would be using probably their- A cup? <laughs> our portable toilet that we had purchased. Yes, and when we were in the pop-up, you mean? Yeah. So here you can see- We are just fitting. We're just fitting. Width-wise, you know, there's your slide. And if you look overhead, like there's just some vines hanging down, nothing that's going to mess with the roof, but I will definitely take a look at it before we leave. Make sure there's no leaves or anything on there. I bet you're glad that I bought the slab topper now, right? very much so we were going back and forth when we bought the camper because there was no slide topper and we're like should we get one should we not get one but there's definitely leaves hanging over my slide and what i was really worried about is like leaves getting caught in there also we get a lot of rain like when we pull that slide in after a rainstorm you just hear the water rushing off i don't really want that hitting the slide and the possibility of it coming in Puddling. on the seals so I really feel like, I mean, we just fit into this site. So you really have to go through on Google Earth, take a look at the pictures. If you go on Reserve America, there's actually pictures in the front and also YouTube. There, there's a lot of people who do, do like pictures or video of each site. Yeah, and now Joe is a very experienced person when it comes to driving with a trailer. Right. Because landscaping. 
but if you are new to this it was it took him a lot to get it you know to thread that needle and really get this in the exact perfect spot well i got it, it in be. the first time but what we didn't take into account was the awning we took into account the slide so after we got it all hooked up i was like i really want to move it over and we couldn't even level the way we wanted to level because of all the sand. I just kept spinning tires. So we had to go back to the old fashioned leveling blocks, which by the way, high five, you high can't five. leave me hanging. We did not kill each other on communication. Rachel's still learning how to communicate through the radios and the walkie talkies and the cell phone to back me in. And the first time we did this, she's like screaming, like, you're about to hit and I get out and I'm like eight feet away. I'm like, you have to, like, we have to get a little better at this. And we definitely learned don't use words like left and right. Use Driver words like and passenger. Driver and passenger because you get confused. Is it my left? Is it his left? Is it the trailer's left? Right. Like, what left is it? So driver's side and passenger side made for better conversing. And we just used our phones. Yeah. My advice would be take a good look at your campsites look at Google Earth and see what kind of foliage is there that if there was growth, if there was a burst of growth, would it make a huge difference? And also, what is your what are your skills like for, for parking the trailer? Right. You may not get the, the most remote place that you want in the campground, but you also don't want to be a nervous Nelly trying to, you know, thread into your parking space. I think what we'll do is we're going to go around and we're gonna put it right here with some music and show you guys all of the different sites and you can kind of be the judge for yourself. Had a few kids, bought a new house, promised you heaven but it never did work out. Got a new
the same roads every day We both get there our own way Thistle and an apple tree How different two souls can be But we both grow from the same sorrow can be like a tree in the wind same old ribs but i can bend turning to understand and sway together now it's almost like a dance rendering It just cuts us deeper through The longer I'm away from you Yeah, we fight good We make love better If we both know We'll be together forever I can be like the tree in the wind Same old roots, but I can bend Learning to understand So a cool thing you can do here at Coercion State Park is to tour the Coercion Unity Settlement. So this is a preserved late 1800s settlement that was developed by members of a commune that wanted to live like a utopian life. And all of their buildings are still here, like the founder's house right behind me. You've got the planetary court, their bakery, their blacksmith, lots of cool old buildings to tour even a graveyard. I don't know if we're able to capture the sound of the bamboo, but the, it is making it even more creepy. So it was so creepy in here. Yeah. Rachel decided that she was going to live stream yeah. over on our two crazy Keto's like, family group. Like, so we're God, just coming out of the river thing, but Rachel's like, it, it is, is so creepy in here. We want some of our keto family to see it. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen that channel, go ahead and check it out. I will leave a link right over my head. So you about ready to go? Yes, I'm just tearing down in here and cleaning up the place. I don't really want to go home, but I know we have to, but we are coming camping again in two weeks. So I'm going to go tear down the outside. At least I don't have to do the sewer. We have to do that on the way out. And then after I don't that, want that job. we'll sit down and do the five things. You need to learn how to empty the black tank. No. Yes. We are all packed up other than the awning. And we have to dump the black tank, which you are going to learn how to dump the black tank. No. You have to come and at least watch. You don't have to touch it, but you need to know how to do it. There's some things that I just don't need to learn. What are you going to do if for some reason I can't do it? Stay home. What if we're on the road already? It won't be a thing. <laughs> okay, it's time for our five things. Five, five things. things. So if you're new to our channel, we review all our campgrounds based on five things. And what are they? 
hospitality, amenities, the campsites themselves, stuff to do, and finally, would we recommend it? Okay, so number one, hospitality. Um, uh, let's talk about the rangers first. You see a lot of rangers around, but they don't really talk. I don't. They're kind of like handling everything. They're not mute. They're just doing their work yeah they're, they're kind of doing their work we've been at some campgrounds where the rangers were like super friendly like coming up starting up conversations i don't kind of get that here but i will say when we arrived because we arrived after the rangers left we were so impressed with the night service that's pretty cool we got here late and they have wow. like we're all checked in already oh my gosh i'm so freaking impressed with this place so they had like a little drop box there and like an envelope with our name in it and it had our parking tag the gate code um directions on where to go map of the campground map of like the trails so that was definitely a plus now we have campground hosts and from what i can see there are three campground hosts here awesome i mean these guys are working hard yeah i mean i've talked to rachel about like hey i would love to look into being a campground host you know get to stay someplace for a week or two weeks for free and and just enjoy some of the different parks and she was like not if we have to work that hard i mean it is amazing but they are making sure that every site is raked and i mean just absolutely pristine yeah and also when you drive around in the uh campsites you'll see like little tags on the numbers if there's somebody going to be staying there and what their checkout date is which makes it great for the campground host because he knows okay they're leaving so i can start kind of cleaning up but there's one campground host that I've seen like all the time and he's cleaning the bathrooms. Constantly. He's walking around with disinfectant. He's picking up all the tree branches. He's picking up all the garbage. So like excellent job taking care of the place. And again, we're here in the middle of COVID. So they're actually closing the bathrooms for like an hour and a half every day so that they can clean them. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really good thing. Now I will say on the bathroom being closed, I did have to go yesterday when they were cleaning and they left the family restroom open while they were cleaning the other one. Which was nice. Cause like, what if you have to poop during the hour and a half that they're cleaning? <laughs> yeah. Number two amenities the amenities i'll let you handle this one so the amenities here the bathrooms were really nice they're they're old they're old but they're clean they're very clean the showers were all inside of the building yeah. which i really unlike john prince park yeah so that was really nice there's a lending library there, and there's a dvd lending library which was amazing right yep and there is a washer and dryer and they were very reasonably priced and there was a laundry sink and i really liked how the laundry area had a folding station and a place to hang up your clothes i will say about the washer and dryer there were two sets of washer and dryers and they were pretty new they weren't like old beat up units some of the no. campgrounds you see they're like old beat up units Rusted and you're out. like yeah so they were pretty new. And if you're stay if you're staying here between December and March, every weekend they have a uh, coffee and refreshments with um, the the Rangers, which I thought was super cute. Now, from what we can see, there is no concession stand here, but there is a vending machine. Yes, there's sodas. vending machines up there, and there might be a couple things at the Ranger Station. We really didn't go up to the Ranger Station, uh, but there's not a whole lot, you know, as far as that kind of stuff. No. So number three, the campsites. Okay, so the campsites are pretty much all dirt. They're, they're not gravel, unless you get a handicap spot. Yeah, now bring your broom and your pail because I'm telling you what, no matter what you do to try to not track it into the house, it's like going to the beach here. You're definitely going to want to make sure you have like one of those like carpet things outside. And we actually ran the camping world to get one of those really good foot scrubbers because I mean, no matter what you did on the mat, what you did inside, you were constantly tracking sand and dirt inside. So we got one of those like heavy duty foot scrubbers so that you can like scrub your feet as you're walking up the steps uh now the handicap sites are paved uh all of the sites from what i can see do have a 15 amp and then they have 30 and 50 amp but none of the sites have sewer which i kind of love sewer you i know you like sewer the sewer doesn't bother me because it's just the two of us and we're do we're weekend warriors let's face it right if we fill up a 50 gallon black tank in three days we need to go to the doctor we have an issue so I'm not too concerned about the sewer other than now that we're all packed up, we have to drive past the dump station and dump instead of being able to do it, you know, like while we're here and before we get all 
tear, tore down. But they um, they do have a picnic table and a fire ring at each site, but not a barbecue grill. Yeah, now I would definitely say if you're going to come here, go through, go replay the part where we show you all the different campsites because the campsites are very different. Some of them are narrow, some of them are deep, some of them are wide and narrow, some of them have overhangs, some of them have trees in the middle of them. So you're really gonna have to pick your site carefully because like our rig perfectly fits in here, but Adjust. there's a lot of other ones we wouldn't have been able to get into. Right. Uh, in walking around and looking at it, in my personal opinion, if we were to come here again, which I think we will come here again, yeah. um, I would say 29 and 30 are the nicest as far as width, depth, and not having anything over you. You kind of get it all in those two sites. Now, those are not paved sites. I would say I wouldn't mind the paved site. I mean, I know they are handicapped sites, but I wouldn't mind the paved site because number one, they're close to the restrooms. Right. And number two, they're paved. Yes. So, and they seem to have a little bit more clearance everywhere. But the sand here is aggressive. So I think even on a paved site, you're, you're going to have a sand issue. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, the thing I really liked about the campsites is they have a whole separate section for tent campers. So they're away from the RVers and let's face it, a lot of times the tent campers are a little bit noisier. So we don't have that and they have their own spot. They're not having to deal with RVers and the tent camping sites are like super nice. I wish I would have known about this when really we tent nice. camped with the kids. Because they also have electric. They have electric in all of the tent camping sites. And water. And they're big and there's lots of foliage and there's lots of like space in between them. Well, and I have to say that when we were tent campers, if you were really close to an RVer, it was frustrating because I want to hear the sounds of the things outside my tent, not and like not their air conditioner the running. sound of their air conditioner running. Final like, thing I would say about all of the sites that I really like, and that is all of the sites have foliage between the two of them. So the foliage is kind of like a con because some of it's overgrown. But it's also a pro because I like having that privacy from my neighbors. It is very nice, but if you're traveling with a family, they're not going to have that much like patio space to like put out toys and things like that because for our rig, like we just fit with our vehicle. And there's also not a lot of room as far as pulling forward. So you're gonna have to be good at backing in because you're gonna have to back in almost like a right angle. Like if you're a fifth wheeler, like you really have, like you'll be good with it, except for some of the sites are too short for a fifth wheel. Uh, but like, I don't have a lot of room to pull straight forward. So you're gonna have to be good at backing in at an angle and maybe pull forward and back in and pull forward and back in. Be patient with your partner. Yeah, so number four, stuff to do. Well, there's definitely the Korshan Unity Settlement to visit. That is a very, very cool thing. If you are a history buff, you will absolutely love walking back in time to this settlement. Right. Uh, there is a boat ramp uh, that takes you into the Astero River and you can go kayaking. I even saw a person uh, launching a boat today with a little electric motor. I don't know how deep it is as far as like regular size motors, uh, but definitely an electric motor will work. Uh, they do rent kayaks and canoes, although we're here during COVID and so they're currently not doing that. And they also have a small playground and a campfire ring. But that's pretty much it. There's not like a whole lot of activities. There's no swimming holes or anything like that. There's two small uh, nature trails. One of them is yes. a half mile long and one of them is uh, three quarters of a mile long. And both of the nature trails actually go from the campfire circle over to the Unity Settlement. So they're not like really long, like five mile hike things. No, I mean, these are probably original paths that the people who lived here used to go back and forth. So yeah. it's not you know, it's more convenient to the settlement. Yeah, and then bike riding, it's nice bike ride because it's very quiet, but there's not like off-road trails. It's pretty much the pavement. I will say it is a pretty small place, so you can walk the entire thing. Like oh, I've yeah. walked the entire thing, as opposed to some of the state parks where like the campgrounds are five miles back from the entrance. Right. So number five, would we recommend this place? I would highly recommend this to couples that are looking for a really quiet place. There's not a lot of noise. I mean, it's just nature. There's beautiful animals here, lots of gopher tortoises. We've seen a lot of birds and butterflies flying right up to our rig. And there seems to be a lot of like older couples here. 
not a lot of families. Yeah, there's not a lot of families. Now, there are some families over in the tent area, which, again, I think is nice because they're separated. So they can be a little bit noisy, but then you can have your retired families and stuff like that kind of in the RV section. Uh, I would say it's very, very quiet. Like, this is the quietest campground we've been at. What you hear right now, this has been the whole weekend. You see the occasional person walking their dog, but... You know, people say hello, but that's it. There's no loud music. I don't hear any televisions. You hear a lot of nature. And unless you get over by the Unity Settlement, you don't have any road noise either, which is really awesome. It's really nice. So this is the perfect place for just like a retreat and just to be quiet and, and enjoy nature. But if you were a family with a bunch of kids, like there's not a lot of playgrounds. I mean, even the one playground that they have is closed right now for COVID and with no swimming hole and um, very little dirt in your campsite, I think that it would be you know, frustrating for little kids not having a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, I would I would recommend it more for like a weekend warrior couple or a retired couple if you just want to get out in nature. Now, if you want to be with your family, it, I think it's a good place for the family if you're coming to, I say no road noise and I, oh, it's, it's somebody going down the street. Right. Uh, it's a nice diesel engine with an apex ultralight. Um, I would say if you want to get it with your family, this is the place to come. If you're taking your family like we did when they were little and it was a no technology weekend, right? Oh, this is great. Bring board games. We're going to explore nature. We're going to just sit as a family. I think that is good. I definitely, looking back, would have come here even over Fish Eating Creek had we known about this place when the kids were camping. Plus, it's a state park, so it's half the price of Fish Eating Creek. It is very, very shady, which was really, really nice. Yeah. And so even when it rained, you weren't, like, getting soaked because there's just so much tree coverage. And, and with the foliage between us, there's a lot of protection from the wind. Gorgeous moss. I mean, the, the walks are just absolutely beautiful here. They planted so many trees and, and bamboo. You can walk through an entire bamboo forest which was really really nice and you are in close proximity to a lot of shopping so yes. you can go to the outlet mall here you can go to a giant bass pro shop Walmart. lots of rv centers oh. we actually have to stop at the rv center again on the way out because i really need some lap sealant to make sure that there's no leaks in our ceiling and there's nobody around us that sells lap sealant. But it's very, very convenient. Yeah, I, I just love the whole area. We will definitely be coming back, but we have a lot of other state parks we want to go to, including a couple that are right up the road. Well, that's going to be our review of Korshan State Park. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, first of all, make sure you hit the like button on this video, but check out some of the videos that we have linked right over there. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we visit a new park, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, happy, happy camping! camping. Thank you.